Hi everybody! Today I'm going to show how to make soft glass ornaments. And in this video I'm making pretty small ornaments. They're only about an inch or inch and a quarter round. And I usually make them a little thicker um, because I make them for pendants so that you can wear them as a piece of jewelry. Uh, they can also be used as regular ornaments or small ornaments for a small tree, etc. And they can also be blown out bigger or you can add more glass and make bigger ornaments. So it's all up to you. But this is just to show how to do them. And uh, so I am going to use a one quarter inch blow tube that I have coated in bead release. And that's what I use to make these ornaments. And also I use the same thing for my vessels, basically made the same way. And for this first ornament, I'm going to be filling it with frit. So I want to try to get out any extra uh, bead release that might be stuck on the inside of that blow tube and hinder any um, frit from flowing down because I'm going to pour it right down the blow tube. And also I want to use a smaller frit. And this is Wild Raspberry by Val Cox. A very pretty pink with a little bit of purple to it. And see it's very uh, fine frit. And it might actually be like medium. I'm not really sure. It could be small or medium. But um, the, the quarter inch size uh, doesn't allow a lot to get in there. So if you use large frit, it could get stuck. Um, so I try to use a finer frit when I'm making these. And so I'm heating up my whole blow tube, even past the bead release, because I want some nice heat in there. The biggest problem with making these ornaments is that the steel will cool off um, quicker than the glass does and it will actually suck the heat out of your um, glass especially the topper part and the topper part is fairly thin and so you can have issues with it cracking at the top that's usually the first place it'll crack um, so you want to make sure you keep going back and putting heat at least into the mandrel you don't really have to heat the top of the glass unless you're going to fix it once it's set but um, if you add heat to that uh, mandrel or the blow tube right above it it will keep the heat in the glass also so it really helps um, so basically i put a couple of wraps of clear around this blow tube and i'm trying to even it out there and i'm going to thin it out um, to make a nice topper for my ornament and this will um, have the um, cap attached to it um, when it's finally done. And so you want to make sure this isn't too thick. You want to try to make it as even as possible and fairly straight on the top. It doesn't have to be perfect uh, because the cap will be covering it. But um, the straighter it is, the better the cap will fit. And it's about a quarter inch um, in from the end of the mandrel and you can see there you could see the clear section is the rest of the glass like sticking out of the mandrel and that makes a perfect base for me to attach the rest of my glass for the ornament um, so it'll hold it and what you want to do here is when you attach the rest of your glass you don't really want to heat the glass that's on your blow tube because you don't want any of this molten glass getting pushed back into your blow tube um, because then it would be really hard to blow it blow it out and it will be kind of stuck in there because it will um, chill inside the metal and kind of fuse and be stuck so you want to make sure that you're just adding glass to the end and not really pushing in towards the uh, hole of the blow tube you don't want to fill that. You just want to add glass on the outside. And so you add as much glass as you want. If I wanted a bigger ornament, I would add more glass, of course. Um, but these are going to be fairly small, and I make them pretty thick. So I could have actually made all of these ornaments about as, twice as thick um, as they are in, the, in these videos. Um, but I like them pretty thick because I normally make them as pendants and I want them a little more durable so I like a thicker ornament at least for this scenario um, but you can make them thinner and so I'm just heating up all this glass and trying to get it round if your top part which is 
what, what, what I was doing right there gets a little distorted because residual heat, even though you're not heating the top, residual heat can distort it. You want to refix that. So now I zoomed up and slowed down a bit to show you how I blow this out. You want to keep rotating and I usually use little puffs um, so I don't constantly blow. I puff a little, turn, puff a little, turn and you want to keep puffing until you see a little bubble coming and I'm looking straight down that mandrel or blow tube so I can see that it's even and I can hold if it's going off center um, I hold the larger side upwards so that it will flow back down and you constantly rotate as you blow and hopefully that'll show you a little bit how you blow it and so I have a nice little ball of clear glass there and it's fairly thick it's not totally blown out as far as it's going to be in the end um, but I want a nice bubble to hold this frit and so I just pour it in and if you have a little funnel or something that's great too uh, you just have to make sure the frit will fit inside and flow down to get inside your ornament and so I tap it, just very gently tap it, just to make sure all that frits down. And see, I have it about, I don't know, a third of the way full or something. And I zoomed in again. And now what I want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, now what I want to do is I want to gently heat. And I'm, and I'm spinning very quickly because I want to gently heat the whole ball so the frit will stick all the way around and it won't get stuck to just one side. If I heated just one side of this ball, that's the only place the frit will stick. And so I have to rotate and cover the whole area and gently heat it. So now you see it's finally starting to get a glow to it. And it took a while to get there. This is real time, by the way. I don't have it sped up. I only slowed down a little bit for my blowing section there. And so now I'm blowing a little more, as you see. It got a little bit bigger. And so um, I'm going to redefine that top section again because it was starting to distort again. So if you have to do that, go back and do that. And so I am going to keep heating this and I'm going to reduce it down a little more because you want to make sure all that frit is melded in to your ornament because you're heating you're trying to heat from the outside to the inside so you want to make sure you get all that frit melted in so you won't have any sharp edges on the inside that could cause cracking etc so I'm kind of reducing it down again to a smaller size but I still have a bubble in there I can't see it but I know it's in there because I know how big my original <laughs> size of glass was uh, in there in the first place so, um, so I keep heating until I feel like it's totally melded in, which it is now. And now I'm going to do the final blow. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm blowing a little bit, turning, blowing a little bit, turning, blowing a little bit, turning. And until you get the size you want and it looks even and round. And so now here's a zoom in and I'm slowing down <laughs> once I get into camera. So you can actually see the finished ornament. <laughs> if I could get it in screen. And there's the finished frit ornament. And so that will go in the kiln. So it can uh, cook for a while. And on to the next one. And the next one is going to be a red and black striped. So I am starting with a base of red. And I'm blowing out... Um, I, I bypassed the initial part, so hopefully you got that. So I'm just showing you, I'm blowing it out, trying to get it kind of even, and I get a nice ball. But now I want to flatten that ball into a cylinder. And uh, this is how I do it. I don't know how other people do it, but this is how I do it. I find it easier this way to get a nice even um, twist of glass around it if I'm going to coil it. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flatten this out and then I'm going to coil around a stringer of black to get the black stripes on it or the black um, twisted coil on this um, 
ornament. And so now I have my red ornament and I'm heating it up a little bit and heated that mandrel a little bit. And I'm gonna start with the black stringer, attach it towards the top, and I'm just gonna coil around And I could coil it as tightly or as loosely as I want. It, it's all up to you. If I uh, wanted to put dots on this, I could also put dots on this. Um, I just showed um, the, uh, how to do this coiling just to show you a, a technique, but this could also be dots. Um, so you could layer dots on here or um, any other kind of decoration really you wanna put on. But I usually like to blow out at least halfway the ornament before I put the decoration on um, so that it doesn't distort so much. If I put it on when it was totally unblown and it was totally a solid piece of glass, it would really distort and thin out um, if I did it from that point. So I partially blow out. I blow out like half to two thirds of the way, um, the size of the ornament I want, and then I add the decoration and remelt it in. And so I can keep less distortion um, at the end. And so just like in the last one, I'm redefining that top because it was starting to distort because soft glass, just the residual heat of the soft glass will start distorting glass around it. Um, so now I'm just heating and you could see it's balling up again. So it's no longer a cylinder. It's actually turning back into a ball, which is the natural form that glass takes. It wants to ball up. And so I'm just trying to get that all heated in totally so that the stripes are fully melded in. And you can see really well the differenti differentiation in stripes there. Although the red actually turns black when it's heated, so it's really hard to tell red from black um, when you're making it. And so now I'm gonna blow again. So I let it even out, I let the uh, glow even out and I blow and I rotate and I'm sorry I'm going off the screen here but I had to hold it upwards a little bit to get a nice rounded ball shape and I heat and I rotate and I heat and I rotate until I have a nice ball and now I'm putting it in the very back of the flame there because I'm trying to strike that red a little bit to get it a nice red color because uh, red could muddy out on you um, if it's not struck properly. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. And so um, I end up giving it a nice orange glow. I don't want it really super hot, but it's a nice orange glow and I'm trying to get it, get it nice and even along all of the red to get a nice strike in there. And I'm gonna blow it out just one final time just to make get it all even. It's a little bit crooked and try to even out that ball. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm waiting, waiting, and now I'm finally starting to blow. I wanna wait a little bit until the glow and the heat is all even in that ornament before I actually blow it. Um, if you blow too quickly, the hottest part of the ornament is gonna blow out first and you're gonna have a crooked ornament. So you really have to wait just a couple of seconds for all the heat to even out throughout all of the glass. So that's very important with blowing. But it also, of course, needs to be hot enough to blow. And just uh, a little bit of practice with this and, and you'll get it down because it's, it's not very difficult. It's gotta be hot enough to blow, but then you want it nice and even heat to blow out evenly. And here's a zoom in on that. Like I said, the red's really dark, so it's really hard to see the striping, but you can see it a little bit there. And so that one's gonna go in the kiln. And then the last one, I just sped this up so you don't have to watch everything I'm doing here, because this one did take a little bit longer. And it's another striped bead, with, or another striped ornament, sorry. Um, which I wish I, I wouldn't have made another striped one. I should have done dots or something, but I was just working on an order. So this is what I did. And so I made a cylinder just like the last time. So it's blown out and this is black, by the way, it's a black base. And I'm gonna put four 
fairly thick stripes of white on there. And this is um, about two to three millimeter stringer. So I'm going to put four big stripes, or maybe five, actually five stripes of white all the way around. And this is just a different way to um, do str a striping design or a coiled design because I am going to twist this when it's done. Um, it doesn't have to be done with stripes though. You can actually put dots on this and then twist it so that the dots elongate and start twisting around the bead. Um, or you could just leave it straight dots. I could have also left these um, stripes straight and blown it out like it is and it would just have straight striping sorry straight striping down the ornament when it was finished um, so there's a variety of ways you can do this now i added a little more glass to the topper there because it was a little uneven and had a little indent and so i just added a little more black glass there to fix up that topper which i'm evening out right there um, so it would be more even. So now I got the, the uh, white uh, stripes melted in pretty much. And I have that little dollop of glass sticking out of the end there. And I'm going to use that to um, pinch it with my tweezers later. Um, so when I go to twist it, I'm going to hold it with tweezers when I twist. So I'm leaving that on there purposefully. So now over the white, I'm using a slightly skinnier stringer maybe about a two mil, a one and a half to two millimeter of uh, opaque pink um, around those white stripes. And so I'm just trying to straighten them out there on that white. It was a little off center, which you can do. And I'm heating that mandrel again or the, or the blow tube as you've seen in the beginning right there. And so now I'm gonna melt these down also and I'm going around trying to get every stripe melted in without trying, you know, without distorting the rest of the bubble because there, it, it is a bubble inside. So it's thinner glass than normal. So you have to be aware of that too. So you don't distort your design too much. Redefining that top again. And now once I get those fairly melted in, they don't have to be all the way melted in, but enough to receive the last stripe of Rubino Gold Pink Stringer, which um, this is a stringer that's actually made from pure gold, and that's how it gets the pink color. And I'm putting that right on top of the opaque pink. So you'll have white, um, lighter pink and then into the center which will be the darker rubino pink and so I'm melting that one down too and you can see I'm getting a little bit crooked but that's okay it will be fixed um, I am going to get my tweezers and I'm going to um, pinch out the end there before I start twisting and so here's a little bit closer view so I'm trying to pinch the end there so I have a little handle to be able to twist. And I'm heating the top part a little bit and I'm twisting it. And then I will go, I'll twist it as much as I want. So you can twist this a lot, a little, it's all up to you of how much twist you want in your ornament. Or I could have left it straight. I didn't have to twist this. Uh, so it's all to your preference of what you want. I'm reheating that blow tube as you've seen really well right there. I don't want this thing to crack on me, especially since I'm almost done. Uh, so you want to keep the heat in there. So now I'm going towards the middle section and heating it and then twisting that up also. And I'm going to go along this. I think I have one more section, the bottom section, uh, to twist up and then I'll be pretty much done twisting. And then I'm going to want to pull off that excess glass at the bottom. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm heating the very bottom and I'm twisting as I pull off because I want to keep that twist. And now I'm just going to try to even this out. The stripes still weren't fully melted in. 
So I want to make sure those are all melted in. I want to make sure my topper's even, which is what I'm defining here because it was getting a little too thick, a little too distorted. Want to make sure that stays nice and even so the bead cap will rest on it properly. And so now I have to just straighten out the rest of the ornament. As you can see, it's a little crooked there. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm heating certain sections of it to try to get the glass to move in the way that I want to and using gravity. So then I'm going to blow out a little bit. And sorry, I went off screen for this because I was holding it upward to have gravity uh, move the glass downward. And so now I'm just going to pull out. I still have too much excess glass at the bottom. And so I'm just twisting and pulling out until I like what I see. I didn't have a lot of black going all the way to the bottom. So I'm trying to get that extra pink and white glass off um, so that the black stripes will be all the way to the bottom. And so that's what I'm doing here. Just pulling off enough so that the black will go all the way to the bottom. And now I'm ready to pretty much heat this up and blow out the final ornament. So I have to melt in that little nub at the back. And I will probably blow, I think, a couple times here. I'm not really sure, <laughs> just so I could get it fully formed. But you could see it's a lot more even now. It looks kind of like a Christmas ornament or a Christmas light, the shape of it. But I am going to round this out. So I'm going to blow a little bit. And I'm still kind of off screen. So there's a little bit. So I have the, the top part or the outside edge part is actually. Um, starting to round out. I still have a little more to do. There's a little more glass um, at the back there where, where it was twisted all together at the bottom of the ornament than there is at the top. So I want to heat that one, that section a little bit more, which is right there what I did. Right there I'm heating it a little bit more on the bottom so it'll blow out a little bit more on the bottom. want to make sure I keep hitting that so it'll stay warm. And so now I'm turning, turning, and finally starting to blow, as you see. Little puffs at a time. And I had to hold it upward again. Sorry I went off screen, but I had to hold it upward because it was elongating, holding it straight. And so here's a slowdown and zoom in of that little ornament. And that's pretty much it for these ornaments, but of course you can put whatever design you want on these. But uh, info now about finishing them. Of course, you need your ornaments all cleaned, but even when they're cleaned, you can have, especially with clear, as the three on the right show, um, they get a little haze on them. And that's because you're grinding off that bead release. You want to make sure it's all gone and clear when it's wet but you can still have this little haze when it's dry. But that can be easily remedied. And that's by using da, 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 nail polish. If you get clear nail polish, you can actually put it on the inside of your little, the top section there. And that one's half nail polished, half not nail polished. And you could see the difference. Now it looks nice and clear. And also this is something you can do with your regular transparent or clear beads. And now for the toppers. I use the 10 millimeter or 5 8 inch toppers and they're available in gold or silver. Um, they're also available in half inch but for the quarter inch mandrel I use the 5 8 inch um, toppers. And you can either buy them in bulk online, look for ornament caps, or you can buy cheap ornaments at the store and just use the caps. And so here's the caps I have, gold or silver, and you could see that one of the center red uh, ornament, the, the top was a little too big to fit that cap. That cap would not fit on there. And so you have to be really careful with those types of caps 
um, because they're set, the size is set. And so if you're a little off size, you're in trouble. That's why I like the other ones that are flanged. And so as you can see here, I have that picture and then I have another picture with the sizes there. And um, they're pretty much really close. But as you can see, that one, that red one, it wouldn't fit the gold topper. But the other one, the silver glass one, in the next picture, does fit the, the gold topper. And then the silver topper, even though it's the same size, can actually be manipulated to actually rest on that red one, even though it was kind of big. So uh, just an FYI on that, there's different kinds of toppers and whatever you prefer in gold or silver. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching.